Hi, and welcome to 8th grade Regents Art Science. My name is George Boyd. What I'd like to do is walk you through the syllabus, give you an idea of how to navigate Google Classroom, and talk about what we're going to cover as far as content and what my expectations are. Okay, so with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a copy of the syllabus. Uh, this is what I handed out to the students the first day of school. Um, at the top is my email where you can contact me. Uh, directly below that is the units of study, which includes prologue, measuring the earth, rocks and minerals, dynamic crust, <clears throat> surface processes, astronomy, which is earth and space and beyond, study of the atmosphere, climates, and geologic history. Uh, prologue is the introductory chapter where we review graphing, density, calculating percent error, uh, measurements, and the units. What this is basically doing is it's giving them a solid base uh, and reviewing skills that they're going to be applying in all the other chapters. Okay, uh, with supplies, they're all going to need a, a Chromebook charged every day. The majority of the notes are going to be on Google Classroom. Uh, when we're listening to things in class, obviously they're all not going to be in sync, so headphones are a good idea. Uh, handouts, I recommend a three-ring binder as opposed to a folder or a spiral book, simply because a lot of the handouts that I, that, um, I give them we want to keep in chronological order and uh, chapter specific. So if, if they put them right in the binder and we organize them, it tends to work out a lot better than just stick them in a folder. Uh, pens and pencils. Pens, you know, for most of, most of their writing uh, this year, it's going to be negligible. Most is going to be digital. Uh, pencils is for graphing mostly. And uh, calculator, they need a four-function calculator for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, the calculators that they have for math class are a lot more uh, advanced. The graphing calculators, the TI-84s, or whatever it is that they're using these days, but they can use that for this class as well. Um, come Regents time, though, they don't let them use a calculator that has memory. So uh, by the end of the year, they'll have to find one of those. Textbook, it's going to be the McGuire Earth Science Physical Settings Second Edition. Uh, also, I'm ordering a review book that should be in shortly, and I'll be handing those out to the kids. The review books have a glossary in the back that's very helpful. It's got a copy of the reference table, which is a 16-page booklet that has formulas, charts, and diagrams that they use throughout the year. Also, uh, there are chapter summaries, which can supplement their notes, and there's practice regions questions that they could use. Attendance is taken every day uh, for students who are online within the first five minutes. They're supposed to click on Google Meet and I meet with them and take attendance. Grading policy, uh, this year it's 30% summative, 70% formative. The 30% summative is by, uh, based primarily on regions, uh, previous regions exam questions. That way it's a good indicator as to how they're going to do on the the end of the year test. Uh, what I tend to use is Test Wizard and Castle Learning for, uh, for those test questions. Labs are 20%. Uh, in order to sit for the Regents exam, they need at least 30 lab hours. Not 30 labs, but 30 lab hours. Some labs count as an hour and a half, some count as two hours. What I do is I keep track of those. As long as it's a passing grade, it goes into a folder, and I keep those in the classroom. On a rare occasion, the state will request the folders, and they just want to confirm that the students have the, the minimum number of lab hours to sit for the test. Quizzes are 15%. Those can be almost anything. I've used Edpuzzle, which is, which is an online program that lets you intermittently ask questions throughout a short video something related to what we're doing. Um, also, Castle Learning can be used as quizzes, uh, test, test Wizard. Homework is 20%. That's counted based on whether it's completed or not. So uh, 
as long as long as they're ambitious and they're getting their homework in on time, that a part of their grade should help. Uh, Ten percent remote assignments. Those assignments are done when they are on their own at home. So I'm going to try to be understanding because I know they don't have the the same support that they would if they were in person in school. So just be aware that I am taking into consideration the fact that things are a little bit more difficult for the students this year and I'm going to try to be flexible. 5% participation that's going to be based on their willingness to contribute in class and also their attendance. Okay. Now, now in preparation for school this year what I did was I went online and I looked up uh, different resources. There's a lot more things out there uh, than there have been in past years because of all the distance learning. There's virtual field trips, there's uh, Google Arts and Culture which has 360 degree view um, locations that you can visit. There's also a lot of simulators online, so there's lots of, lots of resources and supportive materials. Now what I'd like to do is I'll give you a little idea of uh, how to navigate Google Classroom and what resources the kids have available. First of all, when you log on, it's going to come out as a stream. What you want to do is hit Classwork. And what that'll do is that'll categorize everything into the topics that I created. On the left-hand side, there's a, a Resources tab. If you click on that, it'll give you the course policy. That's the grading policy. Um, also, the bell schedules are posted there. I, I put the, the hybrid calendar in case they forget. And we have a copy of the lab policy and the earth science reference table in case they want to print it out. The Northport lab policy, um, the main takeaway is that if a lab is a day late, if there's a 10 point deduction. Also, the last day that you can hand in a lab for a particular quarter is the end of the quarter. In other words, if you're missing a lab for the first quarter and we're into the second quarter, you can no longer make those up. So what that does is it just prevents the kids from uh, trying to hand in all their labs at the end of the year, Okay, which is obviously counterproductive. Let me show you. This is the reference table. This is a 16-page booklet that has all different charts, diagrams, maps, and formulas that they will hopefully be familiar with by the end of the year and they can use this when they take the Regents exam. They can also use this when they take quarterly exams and the midterm. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll give you an idea what the classroom looks like. Uh, the classroom, the desks are spread out, uh, they're separated by plexiglass, as you know, the students are wearing masks the majority of the day, except for mask breaks. The uh, students, when they're walking in the hallway, they try to socially distance, stay six feet apart. They travel in one direction in each of the hallways so that there's less congregating. Um, also, we have hand sanitizer dispensers in each of the classrooms and wipes where they can uh, wipe down any high traffic surfaces. And the good news is the students seem to be adapting fairly well. Well, hopefully that gave you a little bit of an idea of what their day looks like and what the year is going to entail. Um, I'm looking forward to a great year and thank you very much. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or concerns. Thank you.